people who have a bad Saturday, it was never based on Saturday. It was based on last Wednesday in you know 2015. Yeah? It's very rarely today that's bothering you in the day. <laughs> Which just blows my mind. <laughs> because the solution is so simple in a sense, yeah? Because right now, no one is under any inherent threat at this moment. Like the second, yeah? Nothing, no one has a gun, I don't think, and nothing, I don't think any cat- catastrophic events that happen in this room. Yet many people won't be responding to this sense of okayness. They'll be reacting to that it wasn't okay or it's not going to be okay, yeah? So they bring the unokayness into the room. The room doesn't produce the unokayness. You and I bring the unokayness here. Yeah? And then we want relief from it, but we want relief from it as that which is bringing it forth. It's insanity. How can you expect any long-lasting radical relief if you keep seeking the solution from the problem? It's impossible. It's not going to work. It has to be it has to be failed from the get-go. What happens, it gives you, let's say, maybe a temporary relief, just like shooting drugs does. But then, it's like, if you look at it on a pay-off pay cost ratio, it's really one-sided after a while. You may get the payoff, but the cost is unbelievable. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, and that, so that scale keeps getting tipped. More and more cost, less and less payoff. Yeah? But... Uh, so this is just an idea. Come and I came, I lived under that tyranny of, of a, a mind obsessed with the idea of being a self, you know? This something flawed, unlovable, unworthy person who felt uncomfortable in its own skin, which is insane because it's the only skin you're going to be in, you yeah? know? It's a bad way to start the day, to be uncomfortable when you're in your own skin. When all that energy was trying to drive me out of what it thought were the, where the problem was, which was really where the solution is, which is now. But the now I was responding to wasn't a now. It was a mental now, which is there and then. It was all chock full of old things and, and fearful new things that never happened. Yeah. So how are you going to deal with the problems of the day if the problems aren't of the day? <laughs> You know what I mean? How are you going to be successful dealing with the problems that seem to be of Saturday when they're not of Saturday? And if they're not of Saturday, then where are they from? Where is the problem from if it's not of today? And if it's not of today, if it's of yesterday, then how is yesterday generating a problem today if it's gone? How could that fire that's already burnt out start up another fire? It must the embers of that fire must be kicked by something. Something must stop in there and start and, and produce a spark. I think that something is you and I, the mind, yeah. The conditional mind. So the conditional mind resurrects what it thought happened and refers to what's happening now based on that. And then it projects what it thought happened into what it thinks will happen. And we get to live a freaking interpretation that's pretty damn dry, mostly on the negative side. And, you know, in that condition, you're apt to do almost anything to get relief. Buy something that you can't afford, do drugs when you know it's insane to do, try to sleep with somebody who's a, going out with your best friend, some things like that. This becomes like a drive to get some kind of relief from an imaginary problem. Yeah, and therefore, the seeking for the relief becomes the bigger problem, in a way. Because it's the real actualization of the problem. The problem can't actualize it if it's from last week. It's you that actualizes it. Yeah? You and I. We give it life. We breathe into it. The thought system breathes into the importance of that. Yeah? And it breathes into the importance of next week. I see it all the time. People don't entertain, I'm okay now. They entertain, I will be okay. If I can get through this, 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 which is always going to be another this, if I get through this now, which it means I'm not good, I'm not okay now, I will be okay. That's like the booby prize. I will be okay. <laughs> you don't see it? To me, it's a form of slavery. It is. 
you know, form of slavery. No, no, the delivery isn't going to happen now, but it may happen if you're really, really good, or if you really, really do this, or if you meet someone who's really, really good and he can do it for you. Yeah? Oh, man. So what happened for me in alcoholism? Man, I was rode by that. Man, that parasite rode this opportunity for a long time. Brought it to some places, man. Some mental, emotional states that can be captured by the statement in recovery called pitiful, incomprehensible demoralization. A real rich experience of that for long periods of time. Whatever qualities I had was a, as a kid were so muted by the time after a few years of active alcoholism and drug addiction. There was basically nothing there, though it was never left, but the possibility of accessing it seemed to be totally gone. I was taken over by a parasite called alcoholism, and it used me for transportation. Like We use this example because I really love it about the... Uh, there's this mushroom cordyceps mushroom that, uh, like everything else here, its main instinct is to uh, procreate. Yeah? So this mushroom, its seeds are called spores, and usually it's based on wind or something, or somebody kicks it for it to get spread. But this mushroom isn't going to take that chance. So what it does is it, it, it flies around and lands on ants, these ants, and it burrows into their head, the spore. And it jacks into the ant's brain and it tells the ant where to go. It says, I want you to go to a dank, dark little place. And then the ant, well, the ant probably wouldn't have gone on its own. But let's say the ant has self said in this. It's saying, I love dank, dark places. <laughs> <laughs> but that, it wasn't its idea at all. It was jacked into by the damn mushroom intelligence. And now the spore directs it to this dank, dark place, which is very hospitable to a mushroom not to a fucking ant, you know, <laughs> and then it, it kills the ant there, and then the mushroom goes right out of the head of the ant. Uh, you think that's only a, a very unique experience in the, in the, in the uh, microscopic world of nature? Every, there is so much parasitical stuff going on, and alcoholism is one of the, one parasitical movements that actually has been captured and written about yeah. In 1935, 39, when they wrote the big book of AA, they captured and explained some of the characteristics of the parasite of alcoholism so that you and I could recognize it and stop calling it us, yeah, hopefully. Yeah, I would say that's the end point. And I think it's really, really defined and reinforced by a very important statement in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous on page 64 in the inventory process. You guys, some of you, most of you are in the A, you'll follow it. It's, this is a really beautiful statement. It says, uh, being convinced to believe with certainty that self manifested in various ways. So self, yeah? We're calling self something. Manifesting in all these ways is what has defeated us. So we represent us, yeah? And self isn't us. <laughs> that's the important. That's the important distinction is that realize self isn't us. Yeah, self manifested in all these ways. So let's just represent self as a thing. It isn't, but let's just say it. So this thing that isn't us manifesting in various ways is what has defeated us. Yeah. Now, if you're convinced of that. With, with your own evidence, it's pretty easy to come to that, that belief because, you know, it, it rings true in your own experience. All right, if you're ready, if you're convinced of that, we're now going to look at what? It's self, common manifestations. Oh, okay, what are they? He doesn't let us start spouting off what we think they are. The next paragraph says resentment is the number one offender. Oh, so resentment in this logical spin, is a manifestation of self and is one of the ways self defeats us, is through perceiving threats where there aren't any threats and, you know what I mean, getting angry, thinking someone can stop me from getting what we need and whatever like that, yeah? Beautiful diagnosis. So you see it, all right, so self manifests in these ways defeated us. Right, if you're convinced, now you got it, because if you keep thinking it's you, then you're not convinced yet, yeah? If you keep thinking it's you, you're in the throes of the act of being identified as a self. Yeah? 
So being convinced that self manifests in various ways and why that's to feed us, we'll now look at its common manifestations. Okay, so when someone does an inventory or, or talks to you about a resentment, they usually frame it with it's my resentment. Mine and why. Or fear. They don't talk about fear, they talk about I want to talk to you about my fears. Yeah? Not just fear, not the, not the activity of fear, but a specific activity of fear called my fear. My fears, all right? All right, Paul, I want to come over and talk to you about my fears. Uh, I'm busy. <laughs> 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 I've got, I got the laundry to do. All right, well, I want to get together and talk to you about my fears. Well, okay, soon, don't worry. Yeah. So, my, my, very important, it means quite a lot, my. It's the act of claiming or being the proprietor of something you have nothing fucking to do with. <laughs> That's what it is. So, <laughs> so my resentment. <laughs> All right. Now, it's amazing, you'll see that my resentment has a much stronger effect on you than a resentment does. Yeah? Now, if Deb has a resentment, it doesn't really have much of an effect on it. But a similar resentment, as if it's held as mine, it can have a huge effect on me. Yeah? Let's see the difference. There's a resentment happening here, yeah? Right at this position. And I see it as her resentment. I have an immunity somewhat to it, because it's not mine. Yeah? Now, the same resentment. She may be resentful at this person, I may be resentful at the person. And she's resentful because they did that thing, and I'm resentful that they did that thing. But when I see it as her resentment, I'm chilled out about it. But as soon as it becomes my resentment, it has a lot more power, doesn't it? See it. See it. See what's happening there. Your resentment, oh, well, yeah, I'm sorry, you, you don't, well, yeah, it's okay. Why don't you just drop it? It's no big deal. It's your resentment. It's your resentment. Drop it. But the set, my resentment, <laughs> This gives me the right to be wrong or make you wrong or whatever. It's insane. What is that? The my is an activity of mind. It's not just a word thrown in. It implies a huge shift of meaning. A huge weight being added onto something. So fear, my fear. Much different. Resentment, my resentment. Much different. Like the great master says, you don't have to give up your possessions, just give up the possessor. So that would imply the your, yeah? That's what you give up, the your, not the possession. If, you, if the possession's good, it doesn't matter much. But that being them, they're yours, the owning of them, that's where, that's the freedom, yeah? It's very, it's important to see the difference, because you may, have, you may think you're going to get free by giving up things, when they have nothing to do with anything. They're just being used to facilitate the bondage. They're not the bonding. They're, they're like, the, they're like the, 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 uh, the glue, but the craziness of the glue is coming from you. That has to be inserted for it to really stick and bind in such a quick way. It's got to be your glue. Yeah. So when it says, all right, manifest in all these ways... So a resentment isn't actually my resentment. It's an expression or a manifestation of self in my life. Yeah? Fear isn't actually my fear. It's a manifestation of self in my life. Yeah? Okay. So when the manifestation of self is happening, and I keep calling them mine, at that moment, I'm in the act of being identified as a self. I'm claiming its expressions as mine. You can't be more identified with something than that. I could not be more identified with them if I claimed her behaviors as my behaviors. I'd be freaking super right there. It would be scary. I'd be shopping at the wrong places. <laughs> it could get really weird, you know what I mean? Because I'm thinking, you know, what she, I'm doing that. No, no, Deb's, I'm doing it, yeah? This is the point. This is the point. This is my friend. Yes. <laughs> this is the point with this uh, this thing. Is all right. We're not saying live a life free of resentment and fear and 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 doing things wrong or making mistakes. This isn't about perfection. It's not. That's not a part of manifestation as a goal. It's all of manifestation. That's perfect. But there isn't perfection in manifestation. It's 
So that idea is crazy, but what you can do is sort of get a lot, have a, a lot of relief from it all, yeah? Not by dealing with the resentment per se, but by dealing with the one who has the resentment. Not by dealing with the fear so much, but by dealing with the one who has the fear. Because the meaning of the fear isn't coming from fear, it's coming from you having it. You're giving it all the meaning it has. You can have the same fear if you're in bad shape that day, what you call a fear, you know, let's say about uh, economic security in the future. All right? So one day, I'm, and it has nothing to do with my bank account, may have not gotten enriched or not, but I'm feeling pretty good. So that fear, if it comes up into my head, it doesn't have much staying power because I'm cool, chilled out, yeah? Now, the next day, the same worry, concern about economic security flashes across the screen, you know, like a terrorist alert. Orange, orange. You may not, you may be destitute when, in two years, okay? All right. React, react, citizen, okay? So, you know? <laughs> but let's say you're in bad shape, there's a big reaction to it. If you're in good shape, there is a reaction to it. So is, it the, is the fear bringing you the experience, or are you in, in, injecting it into the fear? In other words, the fear is a possibility. Yeah? In other words, it can produce a loud note or a, or a muted note. It's based on the player of the, of the horn. Yeah? This is the beauty of it. This is a very empowering invitation because one of the things that will drop quite a lot out of your life is fucking blame. One of the things. Quickly. Because you realize no one's doing anything to you without your participa- participation in the event. Like when people call me up and they're, someone's having a real hard time with drugs and stuff, I don't say, you know, I don't say anything about the person with the drugs that's trying to help them. I say, what are you doing to take care of yourself? Because you're getting engaged. You're going to get sucked into the whole fucking cyclone of it, yeah? By trying to be of help, you're going to get fucked in some ways, yeah? <laughs> help isn't just help. It's, it's wise help, you know? Discrimination. You see something. Because if you're keeping someone from a bottom, that's not helping them. If you're trying to sell them from save them, that may be that you but you and them may go down with the boat. Yeah. So this is like totally empowering. It's not a passive spiritual practice. Oh, I'm just gonna go with the slings and arrows of life and just wear you know, wear the best face possible. No. You see, you you track the, the arrow and the slings and you see who's shooting them and you realize it's mine. Yeah? That Projection comes first, and then perception occurs. Projection of mind and perception of the apparatus. So the apparatus perceives the projection as being real and solid, and falls into this dream state, yeah? And in this dream state, the dreamer, as the Course of Miracles says so beautifully, you and I are the dreamer of the dream. We forgot, or we're forgetting, I don't like to put it in past tense, we're forgetting that we're the dreamer of the dream, and in that forgetfulness, we give everything we've dreamt all the power to affect us. Yeah. But not as mine, but as the dreamt object. Yeah. So the idea of trying to be peaceful in a very small space with a lion, with a with a tiger is insane. Yeah. I don't care how many books you read about how to cohabitate a small space with a tiger, you're still going to have a very sense of fear that that tiger can rip your throat out at any minute. Yeah? I don't care how many affirmations, there is no tiger, there is a, <laughs> there is no tiger, there is no tiger. You know? The whole point is, what's, what would happen if you realized you weren't the dreamt object? Forget the tiger, that you were this dreamt object. From this, that is being given the meaning. The meaning that the dreamt tiger is real is being given that by the dreaming going through here. And then being taken as this, as being the dreamer, this action figure, and then I give the tiger all the power to affect me as this. But mind is unscathed. Mind is like the sky right now outside. All the shenanigans that are happening don't affect it at one bit. Yeah. That's what mind is like, the big M mind. Yeah. Once the mind gets in the activity or falls for the activity of the my, becoming the doer, the claimer, the thinker, the haver, the feeler, then it forgets it's the dreaming, and now it takes itself to be the dreamt object, and everything else that's dreamt now has the power to affect it. That sounds like our days, eh?
Now, if the dreamt object feels a little less than a dreamt object that day, things go better. When it really feels it's a dreamt object, things go bad. You don't see that the tide isn't based on the moon or anything. It's based on the mind's at where it is at, you know? If the mind is totally up the ass of self, fucking, this place seems as real as real can be. When it pops out of the ass of self, and you'll hear it, you'll feel a pop, but you'll be out of the ass of self. When it's out of the ass of self, the same thing that seems so heavy, you'll travel lighter over. Did the thing suddenly change and become light? Or was the fact that it was actually never heavy, nor is it light, it's neither. That you and I are giving all the meaning it has. You don't see that, but to me that's an incredible liberating statement. If entertained, you and I are giving everything all the meaning it has. Now we think, oh, the you and I is this, and this is giving everything all the meaning it has. No, the mind is the I, and it gave this a meaning. And it gave this the meaning, a very special meaning. Amongst all these yous, there's only one you crowned this one crown, which is me. And this is it. Yeah? This becomes the center of the mental universe now. <laughs> and it's called a system of thought and interpretation called what? Self-centeredness. Yeah? The center is self now because this you has been crowned with the me. Yeah? The you has taken on, tried to adopt or hijack the qualities that are moving through it, which is consciousness, and it tries to claim to be the one who's conscious. Yeah? It tries to take credit for I'm seeing, I'm hearing, I'm feeling, I'm tasting, I'm touching, yeah? I'm thinking, which is the biggest boogaboo that ever happened to it. As soon as it's in a position of these are my thoughts, it's under it's it's the bondage of self, that's like unbelievable glue. Yeah? It can never bond, but in time it can apply it so much so often it sure seems like you're a continual. It sure seems like when you feel like you bit the, the bait now, it immediately it projects a feeling of being a historical fish. Oh, and then you start having a feeling that you were before the thoughts, that you're prior to everything here, instead of this is, a, this is an afterthought. So it wants to move itself from in front of the camera and become the director, like in AA. It wants to play the director. It wants to play God. Yeah? It wants to be behind the camera, but it can never be behind the camera. The sense of being Paul or Michael or Susan is a production of a mental process. It takes time. It is of time. Like Jesus says, you're in this world, but you're not of this world. It, this, is, this sense of Paul is in this world. It is of time. Yeah. But we are of timelessness. What we are isn't of time. And, the, uh, and the, the demonstration of what we are is in the living conscious contact. Consciousness, there's an awareness of the consciousness that's facilitating this event. Yeah. To me, that's what we are. We are not of a thing. We are not of a mental idea. We're not an emotional creature. We're not a physical creature. We're not a hybrid of anything. We are that which cannot be heard, cannot be felt, cannot be sensed, cannot be tasted. We are that which cannot be conceived of because it's what's conceiving. We are that which cannot become aware of because it is the awareness of everything else. Now what would that possibly do for your day? Find out. For me, what I found out, it causes... Without any thought of effort, you're here in Saturday because it seems totally impossible you could be anywhere else. Yeah? There's no more debating it anymore. You're here because you can't be anywhere else. So there's no striving to get into the moment. You're totally in the moment because you can't be out of the moment. Your realization isn't, oh, I realize I'm, I can be totally in the moment when I do this, this, and this, and this. The realization is you can't be out of the moment, and then you find out what it's like to be in every moment. Totally different. The one is, I'm going to do something to get into the moment. I'm going to really know the moment. I'm going to grab it by the gonads and ride this moment, jumping off a cliff today, and I'm going to skyboard or whatever. I'm going to, I got it by the balls. I'm in the moment. So in the moment, yeah. But what happens is, if you believe that you got in the moment, then there's the belief that you can be out of the moment. 
And I bet you what's going to dominate you is going to be the belief you're out of the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and as soon as there's the belief you're out of the moment, what happens? It produces agitation of mind to do what? Get into the moment. That's the slavery. What happens if you can't be out of a moment? It cuts the whole machinery off. You're left with nothing, and then you find out what nothing looks like becoming something every day. That's what happens. And to me, finding out is a much more convincing, tactile, sense-felt knowledge than knowing, man. Knowing will, will escape you the, the most, at the most important times when you really need to know, it will escape you. Yeah. But what you what is there to find out will never escape you. Yeah. This brings a, an ability to enjoy peace of mind, like it says in our book. You'll lose interest in others and gain interest. No, you'll gain interest in others. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll lose interest in others and gain interest in yourself. Yes, yeah. and then you'll be royally fucked. <laughs> But you won't know it. That will go on for a few chapters. <laughs> and then chapter number one, Mary did it to me. <laughs> chapter number two, my upbringing. <laughs> so you'll lose interest in yourself and gain interest in others. Yeah. In one point it says when you're established in this condition, you will, uh, you'll sense the conscious presence of that higher power. Yeah. You'll feel a new power flow in. You'll realize you can face life successfully. You'll be reborn. Yeah. That's simple. Just a change of mind. Yeah. What happens if the selfing isn't being fed by your interest and attention? It can't produce the sense of self. It needs your juice. Yeah. All it is is pointing. All the selfing is doing is claiming. It is not the seer, it claims to be the seer. It is not the thinker, it claims to be the thinker. It is not the feeler, it claims to be the feeler. It's not the hearer, it claims to be the hearer. Yeah? What would happen if you saw that activity, you just saw the claiming, and you didn't make the leap into being the claimer? Yeah? There would be freedom from the bondage of self. There's the claiming, I'm not disputing it, the mind's doing that all day, but what happens is, the mind makes a leap into being the claimer. Yeah? All the assumptions that you're the seer do not make you the seer. All they do is point. They use the seeing to point to an imaginary seer. The mind itself makes the leap. It, nothing else could do it. Yeah? Nothing else could make something that's not real seem real except reality. What else could? How could something false get false get reality from everything else that's false? How could it garner reality from falsehood? But it can appear to be true to what is true. So when it says in AA, false evidence appearing real as an acronym for fear, what does what that why does that event really rely on? It has to have a you to appear to be real too. False evidence is appearing to be real. That's an observational statement. False evidence is appearing to be real. It doesn't say it's real. It says it's appearing to be real. For it to appear to be real, it has to be appearing to be real to what? What's real? And how does it get that? It, it appears to be real to a you. And then what gives it the meaning of reality? Not the who. The who facilitates it. Because the what, when identified as the who, forgets it's the what. And so now, this thing seems fucking real to me. Yeah. And then if my condition shifts, it doesn't appear real. And then if it shifts again, it appears real. What is it? Is it one or the other? It's neither. You and I are giving it to meaning. So if your day's going bad, don't look at all that minutiae of the day. Turn it on you and check it out. See what's going on there. I would imagine you're believing a lot of thoughts that are happening seemingly on Saturday, but they're not about Saturday at all. They're about last Wednesday or next Tuesday. <laughs> I mean, how many, today we got up, how many thoughts did I need to navigate myself to get here? Supposedly you have 70,000 thoughts a day, all right? So maybe three hours of my day are gone. I got up at nine or so, now it's 12. So that's three hours, so that's like one, what, ninth of the day. 
So you would think I would have spent maybe, it was a simple distribution, about 15,000 thoughts to navigate from 9 to 12 today. But all I had to do was like, make the eggs, toast, you know, time, I know I'm tardy, usually got to get earlier, this and that, get in the car, drive here. Maybe I needed 14 thoughts for those. What are the, what are the, what are the 16,000 other ones doing? <laughs> They're about Paul yesterday, Paul tomorrow, Deb yesterday, Deb tomorrow, you know. <laughs> they're about tons of stuff. And you would think, and they really don't have any interest in the topics they're about. Their interest is to bond the mind to the idea of being a self, a long-lasting, independent, separate figure, an action figure, yes? Someone who was once there, who will be there, and therefore is here now. That's what it's about. That's what those thoughts are being used for. They're used to facilitate the bondage of self. Yeah. You do not need 70,000 thoughts to navigate a Saturday in Marin County. <laughs> this isn't like, you know, survival four. Survival four. It's pretty, it's like a homogenized bubble here. Even the bugs are on Prozac here. And no, no one gets bit in Marin, nothing happens. It's just la di da. Oh, should I get my latte with. Frappuccino, whatever, or <laughs> sprinkles of organic cow cow, cow cow, spun four times one way because it's the whole, it's the full moon today. And then, you know, like, oh, and then where am I going to get my next yoga pants? And yeah. I want to sign up for that yoga intensive. Then get my hair done and get my plastic surgery at four. Yeah. <laughs> Don't see anyone till seven, so the swelling goes down. And, but I have movies at home. Down, at downtown Abbey, what is that thing? <laughs> Some strange English show people are watching. You know, it's like, this is like, we're not in survival mode here. But I'll tell you, <laughs> the ability escapes many of us to enjoy the day. Because we're never in this day. We're up in the mental realm of yesterday and tomorrow. You're beholden to the thoughts that are yours. And most of the thoughts that are yours are about yesterday and tomorrow. So you are beheld, you you are beholden and actually claimed by time. The activity of call of you this life today has already been claimed by time. You've pledged allegiance to it already. Just like when people come to these meetings, they sometimes really like it. And then they always raise their hand and go, but, and this is when the world starts, but Tuesday, so they want to, everything's going swimmingly this Saturday morning or early afternoon. They want to bring Tuesday into it, you know? Tuesday, I'll have to be at work. All right. It's like pledging allegiance to time. Why not just enjoy the freedom from Tuesday this Saturday? Why not, why bring Tuesday into it? Saturday isn't more than enough. Do I need Tuesday and Wednesday and Friday? <laughs> you know, they need to see. But it's so scary, there's nothing here on Saturday. Exactly. It's like an open page, nothing written on it. It will play itself out and you'll find out. And if it's, and while it's being valued and while it's valuable, you'll know it. Instead of having, like, people go to work and then they get home at 8 o'clock at night, the, the mind pontificates, they had a bad day. I had a very bad day at work today. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it when you were having a bad day? Wouldn't, while, you, the, while the bad was going on at 11, it, wouldn't you know that it was bad? Why is it that you have no idea? But then the mind breaks the news to you. Like a CNN news flash. You had a bad day at 8 o'clock at night. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. That guy at 10 o'clock this morning, he was trying to fuck with you. Oh, yeah, I didn't notice it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I'm telling you, I'm, out, I'm looking out for you. Oh, good. Oh, yes, I know you've always been my... Greek oracle. Yes, yes. Oh, wise one. Tell me what should I do? Well, fucking fire his ass. <laughs> but he's my boss. Oh, fuck. The powerlessness rises up. Oh. <laughs> it's so nice just to be here. And the only way it worked for me wasn't trying to get here. Is realize I couldn't be, couldn't be anywhere else. I'm telling you, that's how it worked for me. That's my experience. My experience was a backdoor approach. It wasn't about getting the goal and then moving towards it. It was realizing who wants to move towards the goal. And then seeing that as not me. And then losing interest in all of its goals. And then finding the pot of gold right here and now. 
right underneath my freaking nose. It's called, where is it located? You don't need a map. It's right now, Saturday, in Marin City. Why? Because you're here. This is where the gold is. Wherever you are is the gold of the day. This is our invitation right now. No one else is going to be able to receive this invitation for you right now. You're the one who showed up. Yeah? You can be fed by these little meetings. You can be fed by a walk when you're available. Just like in recovery, I remember service is such an important aspect of recovery. A lot of other spiritual groups, not especially in the non-duality, they, they don't really, uh, maybe they do, but when I went, they didn't really uh, put much emphasis on it. Because there are emphasis is there is no person to do service, whatever, but service is a really good way to get a sense that there is no person to do service. <laughs> Instead of sitting there as a person saying, there is no person to do service, do some, per- do some service and you won't feel like a person, then you'll get it. Aha! You'll get it that way. It's, to me, it works better that way. So, so here's the idea of service. Service, when I did it in the past, because I was in the habit of being up the ass of self for the first few years of recovery. Yeah, that was the habit of mine. So I was feeling that obsession and being closed in. And when I did service, what happened is the feeling was I, I felt bigger or larger because I was available. I came out of the ass of self and I was being involved with others. And I felt that availability. And in that availability, I sensed the presence. Yeah? The presence of the higher power, whatever you want to call it. Yeah? Yet, though, the habit of mine was I claimed it. For, I'm the one who's sensing this presence. I was the one who's available. And then that brought me back up the ass of self, mm-hmm. the claiming. Yeah, and then I'd have to do service again to get reprieved from that. The service would occur, the selfie would claim it, I'm the one who did it. Oh, that was I, that was really nice of me to be nice to that guy today. Whatever. Claim it all, I was up the ass of self again. You know, mm-hmm. trying to collect service. So like I've done so much service, it should mean something on my spiritual resume. I've done this, I've done that, I've sponsored all these people. But it was dry, it was dead, because it had been claimed. Once the selfie claims anything, it neuters it. It takes its real value out of it. Yeah? Just like this message. If this message is received and made into something, that something is the act of neutering. That's what it does. This is what selfing does. It claims everything to fit, it, fit everything it comes in contact with in its frame. Instead of submitting its failedness and surrendering, it will take a solution and fit it into its frame, which is part of the problem. Yeah? <clears throat> so here. So this thing with the... Uh, Who was I with this? The selfie, wasn't it? You're claiming uh, no, What? Claiming. Oh, oh, yeah, the claiming. So here, yeah, so then, all right, you do service. And then one time the service was occurring, and I felt that availability. Like, I would go. It didn't matter what condition you were in. You have, could be having the worst day, and you go to, let's say, Azanam, which is a, a low-level detox in the city. Mm-hmm. And you'd be having a meeting there. After 10 minutes, your whole shit, the thing would shift, totally, yeah? You just you come out of whatever seeming condition you were in because it's only seeming. That's how why you can come out of it so quickly. <laughs> you don't need the process to leave an imaginary position. Yeah, you realize it's imaginary. The relief is immediate. So what happened is, after a while, I do the feel the availability, sense of presence, and then once I sense maybe I'm the presence. Yeah, my my allegiance shifted from the one the selfing that was claiming to be the one who was present, but maybe I'm the presence. And what happens if I'm the presence, and this is I found out, if I'm the presence, which I believe we all are, then you and I are available. That's our nature. Yeah? It's not something to be acquired or achieved, it's something to be expressed. We are available. And if you're available, you're going to sense what? The presence of that availability. When you are available, what you are is available, you are the presence. You are the awareness of that consciousness. You are the sense of presence. Yeah. The consciousness is the sense of being present here, and the awareness of it is that, the sense of it. Yeah. A lot of people are having conscious contact, but they don't have the sense of the conscious contact. They have a, they have a, a mental sense made up that there's a you that's seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching the sense of the conscious contact is from awareness. 
So you have a sense that there's consciousness in contact here. Yeah? And when that, you see that the idea of you is an afterthought that arises after the conscious contact. It's been produced by a mental process. So you start here, and what, what you are is at square zero, and you seemingly start at square three. If you take square three to be the beginning of the game board, the game's going to look totally different to you than if you see it from square zero. Yeah. If you see it from square zero, you'll see square three. <laughs> and when you see square three, it's a sudden realization you're not that. And when you're not that, what happens is you lose interest and attention in all that's facilitating you being that, which is the thoughts is yours, the feelings is yours, the actions is yours. That's how they're all being used to facilitate the you. You lose interest in it all. And when you lose interest in it all, yeah, the interest and attention goes somewhere else. Guess where? Find out where it goes. I found it will end up right where it's always been in what we call Saturday right now. Mm-hmm. And it will be doing what? Enriching my life. Instead of being enslaved to me there and me then and being used to obsess my mind on the idea of being a self, it's now enriching the same mind. Yeah. It seems like an upgrade to me. You know? And how it translates in a long period of, or a stretch of time is you'll travel lighter over the events of your life. It may not change all the events, it may change them, but you'll travel lighter over whatever you're going to have to go through as this action figure. Yeah? And what more do you want in your life? When you realize how heavy it can be and where that source of the heaviness is arriving from, and you tell the truth about that, the possibility of being free from it dawns on you. Not free as it anymore, but from it. Yeah? You realize, I am not a long-lasting, independent, separate entity. I don't know what the hell I am, but I know I'm not that. And then I find out what I am over time. Yeah. If there's no time, you really know, know what you are. In time, you'll find out. If there's no time, and suddenly you went at that moment, you, that would be the infinite knowledge. But in here, you'll find out in time what you are. Yeah. And it will enrich you. And it will probably be used to enrich others without you are thinking you're the enricher of others. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And you'll be living the two bases of most of the writings of the A co-founder, which is humility. If you read about Bill W., all his right, he stresses humility constantly. Knowing your right position. You're not, the, it's, that, it's like having the horse in front of the cart, not the cart in front of the horse. The idea of you is a dead mental idea. The horse of you is the living expression going on. Yeah? You can ride the horse, you can't ride the cart without a horse. <laughs> you ain't riding. So if the horse gets in the cart, it ain't going anywhere. <laughs> get in the car. Wait, it's not moving. It's like we were talking about the hamster cage. Have you ever seen a motorized hamster cage? (laughs) Have you? No. You put the hamster in, and then the the meaning of the hamster cage is given to it by the hamster. It doesn't have, it's not a hamster cage. It's just a a cylinder that's not moving, a mesh-like cylinder. Yeah? Why it's called a hamster cage? Because its message, its definition is defined by the hamster. <laughs> when I get it, when the hamster gets in the cage, it starts doing what it seems to like to do, and it runs and it creates the. Now, from the point of view of self, it will probably tell a story that it's being enslaved by the cage. <laughs> this cage won't let me go. It's just, oh, who turned up the cage? <laughs> but and then it's amazing when it gets out of the cage it goes miracle upon miracle something stopped the cage something thank God God stopped the cage no you got out <laughs> if you get back in as a knower of God there goes the cage <laughs> there is no mechanized motorized hamster cages you and I are giving everything the meaning you have if you're being run into the ground, you're doing the running. <laughs> now,
Now, you know, if we were in situations like at a Siberian camp, then the consequential reality would be seen really, really real. But we're in fucking La La Land here in Burning County. Come on. Jesus. You may get what? You, know, you feel like you're deprived if you only have two lattes today? You know? it's, it's incredible. We're like, we have the ease and comfort to allow, allow the mind to free range. Fucking roam in possibilities that aren't often through advertising and things, yeah? To be able to run and then just explore some other possibilities. Yeah? We're not, our, we're not totally trying to survive every second here, yeah? We've been given the grace and the freedom to relax. Not for the whole purpose of relaxing, like in the, in the third step of AA, it says, oh, please... Grant me the relief of the bondage of self, not so that I can have a house of knowledge, though that may happen, so that I may be a maximum service to others, so that I may demonstrate to others your power, your this and that. Yeah, it's never about us. It is about us. It's never about the me. Yeah. So I think it's good news, like they used to call the gospel, which means good news. When those characters were running around, they were trying to bring good news. Look at where they ended up. Crucified. <laughs> Hung upside down. Fed but to the lions. I was just bringing good news. It's not good news. <laughs> it ain't our new good news. It's not good news. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Now when I talk to people, I always try to I say, do you, would you like it to be different? If they don't want it to be different, there's nothing to say. You know, I don't want to hear their story about yesterday and tomorrow. I really don't. What am I going to do about it? Nothing. There's nothing. It's not happening. Wait a minute. I want a solution. Well, that's the solution. To see it that it's not happening. That's the solution. It's not there. No, I need a solution to it. Well, that's the problem. I love it. I want it to be, I always say this now, if I, I wanted to enter into therapy, become a therapist, and my specialty would be what's not happening, yeah? dealing with what's not happening. So I'd have a secretary, and you know, everyone would be paying for like uh, an hour of session. So I'd have eight people, seemingly, for the day. And then for one person would come in, and they start complaining about what's not happening. You know, Oh, next week, this, is, this could happen, and I think my boyfriend's going to be leaving me next week, whatever. And I would go, hey, it's not happening. And they go, but, uh, no, that's it. Not happening. Thank you. See you next week. <laughs> I could have about 60 people in the day. They'd be in and out like this. What, what happened? Oh, a great session. <laughs> Nothing happened. Exactly. Just to see. See what's giving the meaning. How can something that's not going on influence you so greatly today? What's the conduit for it to have the power to affect you? What? It can't affect you. It's not happening. Literally, right? We're not seeing it, hearing it, feeling it, tasting it, touching it. I would say that's a pretty good gauge of if it's happening or not. Yeah? It's not actually happening. So how can it... Where the, where's the source of its power to affect us? I would say it's us. Just like it's that statement said, you and I are the dreamer of the dream. We, we are in the forgetfulness of that. And in that forgetfulness, we've given everything we've dreamt the power to affect us. So we're dreaming the importance of next week, and it's lording over and looming like a weather front. We have a beautiful sky today, but the weather front of what could be next week or what was last week will hang over it, yeah? You won't get the full rays of the light, even though they're always available, because you'll believe in the weather front. Someone else can be underneath the same sky and not to believe in the weather front, and they're getting all the vitamin D they need. But you believe in the weather front, and so for you, you can be seemingly bereft of the sunlight. It's not so, but it can appear to be so to you. Yeah. And what are those weather fronts? They're not up today. They're being brought by the mental storm, yeah? Rooted in yesterday and tomorrow. And they're coming over our day now and closing it down a little bit. And now it's so insane, the bottom of the weather fronts have advertising on it. Right? You know, this, what does it mean to Paul, all this, yeah? And so, not only do you, you don't get the rays, you get constant bombardment 
of what you're like, what you were like, what you're going to be like, how they are, how they were, how they're going to be. It's a living advertisement being played on your fucking head all day. And then you're dying for the light, and you'll do almost anything. You'll buy some cockamamie idea. To, all right, if you move to this place at a certain time of the day, it will be clear, and you'll be able to get light. Oh, sign me up. $30,000 for the two-day trip. All right, Definitely. Instead, but the other person who's awake in a sense is sitting there getting all the sun he needs. Yeah? Realizing it's a very abundant here. Like Jesus says, you know, you watch the lilies of the field. They don't do no toiling or anything like that, but they're so beautiful. And the, the birds of the air, this and that. Yeah? They're not taking much thought about themselves, and yet they're totally abundantly taken care of. And in it, they're quite beautiful. Yet us, yeah, we play God in a way. And we bring life to what's not living. And we allow it to have the biggest influence in our living today. Somebody sent me a thing about a book, a famous book called Drop the Rock. But I say, you never picked it up. There's no one ever to pick up the rock. Because if there's someone who can drop the rock, that someone will pick it up again. I'm telling you. You do not escape out of duality one way or the other. You escape out of duality seeing that it's not two. Yeah? You cannot escape out of duality one way or the other. You don't drop the rock because if you feel like you drop the rock, you will feel like you picked it up again. You escape from duality by seeing it's not two. It's a negation. It stops there. You don't play the game anymore. Yeah? It's not about close and far, connected, disconnected. You don't play it anymore. Your head is, oh, you're way far from the truth today, Paul. Oh, you're really close to the truth today, Paul. <laughs> oh, wise one, yes, I know. What should I do being so far from the truth? Well, avoid that situation or, or practice your balls off to get back there. Okay, I will try to achieve the truth. I've achieved the truth. <gasps> What could possibly happen now? I could lose it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Back to square square three, never square zero. If you went back to square zero, the game's over in a way. (laughs) But you always go back to square three, and then a new offshoot of the game starts occurring. Now, instead of going up the corporate ladder, you're going up the spiritual ladder. wearing robes and uh, sandals instead of like floor shine shoes and suits. <laughs> oh, so it's so, so much better. The robes are so much farther apart. No one's rushing. What the hell? No one's rushing. Try to get over me now? You better believe they are. You ever go on a retreat when you're sitting there and you're, you're not going to get up until everyone else leaves the meditation hall so you are the lone meditator left? I'm the best man in there. Meditate longer than anybody today. <laughs> oh, here he comes. You can't, he, med- he stayed in the hall an hour long. Oh, he must really love the truth. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> no, I've been yearning for it, longing for it for so long. I just can't wait. So the bus pulls up, doors open. Guy down, no, I'm still busily longing for it. I'm here. Open, come on. No, no, I don't think I'm purified enough yet. Get on the fucking bus. Yeah, there's no requirements necessary. You're the one who has all the requirements. If you gave up your old ideas and your opinions, something would dawn on you immediately. Yeah. You'd be free from the bonds yourself. You would have no idea. You thought you were going to get the big prize. It's the absence of you. Yeah, it's the absence of you. The absence of, of the absence of the event of ever getting it is the freedom. Yeah, the absence. From the, the absence or the, the relief from the need to be liberated is the liberation. That's the liberation. When you give up all interest in trying to be liberated as what you're not, that's the liberation from what you're not. It's not a liberation for what you're not, it's from it. Yeah? And then a lot of the joy is what's absent. Not all, not all these great things came. You don't even care so much. What's gone is more than enough to be grateful for. You're like, fucking, Jesus Christ. And if you don't have gratitude, just listen to people who are still in the same seeming plight. 
You're so freaking fortunate and graceful. Grace that you're free from that bondage of self for today. Well, what about tomorrow? Let tomorrow take care of its freaking self. Yeah. You're going to be the main participant participant in tomorrow, just like you're the main participant in today. Yeah? So, wow. Sun, the weather front came in. <laughs> Someone's severely selfing in here. <laughs> Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> it's Frodo! <laughs> Alright, well, that's it, eh? Unless you have any questions. Pass this lovely thing here.